country. The problem is, this happened last year too. We didn't have a drop. It's only for to our own consumption. You know what I mean? But it's still, you know, you do all this stuff. It all does. It really does. Matter of fact, we saw orange trees when we went to California. Oh my God! You are. In March last year, we had that snow. It was all blossomed. Every tree was blossomed. After that snow, there was not a tree left. What are you going to do? You know, it's just. We have pear trees. Yeah. And it was so nice. I got lots of big pictures. Cut the grass or do something different. So I did it. He's like, pick up a piece of pizza. Peach or something, eat it or a pear. Not that. 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 Not and, uh, about this stuff. Yeah, I should have wondered about that. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Morning. Who do we have on the phone? Good morning, sir. Good morning, David Smith. Morning. Good morning, Shannon. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, good morning. We ask you to rise to the opening prayer and pledge of allegiance before we convene the Commission of Public Meeting. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the stay you've granted us, and we use it to the fullest capacity that is pleasing and according to your will. Lord, we are a nation of laws. Going back to the book of Deuteronomy, you have instructed us to obey authority and the laws. This past Tuesday, we recognized and honored our law enforcement on National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. The fine men and women of law enforcement protect the line between good and evil. We thank them for the, their enormous sacrifice and service they provide daily. Remind us to thank an officer for their service and protection when we see them. We ask for your hand to be over them and their safety and protection so they return home each day. Next Monday, we'll remember and honor an individual who gave his life for change in civil rights. On Martin Luther King Day and throughout the year, may we encourage all Americans to volunteer to help raise their communities, promote equal rights for every American. We pray for all racism to cease. We know we are all created in your image. Your love sees no color. and We are all equal in our Creator's eyes. That is the measure of your love. We should honor and follow the example you set. Father, you are the God of rule and order. You provide ones that dedicate their lives to keep that order. At the same time, you have sent ones to declare peace and equality for all. In your word, you state, blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called children of God. May we honor the police and Dr. King's mission. We have strived over the generations to keep law, order, equality, and respect for all. This honor, this morning, we honor those that promote peace and equality. We pray for your guidance over our meeting. These things we humbly pray in your name. Amen. Good morning. We'll convene the commissioner's public meeting at this time. Commissioner, um, I'd like to uh, request uh, approval of some changes to the agenda that were not previously posted. Um, first, I'd like to uh, make some changes to the salary board actions attachment B and TDA attach actions attachment C by removing three positions from both of those lists and those positions are the communication center position the emergency management position and emergency medical services position that's the list for uh, change from 75 hours to 80 hours i move to modify the agenda i second all in favor say aye aye, aye. so carried and then um once we get done with public comment, uh, we're going to move action item 8.5 up first, just so that the uh, sheriff can lead. He's got an appointment on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so at this time, I ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All favor, say aye. 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 So carry on. Public comment on agenda items only. Yes. I'd like to start off by saying that when we have meetings that uh, we do get uh, things happening. First, my name is uh, Bill Fenderson. I'm from Linden. 
Good morning to the public, good morning to the staff, and good morning commissioners. With, with that being said, uh, unfortunately I tripped over some stuff on the internet from the county website which I was people start looking at. But it says in there that everything in so makes a statement is, is approved. Today I come in, pick up the minutes, and nothing's on there for comments that was made by the chair or anyone up here. I'm not picking on anybody, but when someone makes a statement, it should be documented and regularly. Every meeting, in my opinion, should be re recorded and going back. And it has been recorded because in the county minutes today, for the last couple of weeks, I've been going over each meeting. I've got a lot of time on my hands, but I follow through. When people said something that is important, when a fellow says, again, they'll take us the wrong way. When someone says that he served in the military, and someone made, <coughs> makes a remark that, thank you for your service, it should be designated on them minutes. It should be on the minutes. I've done so many meetings in my years, you can't even fathom. A lot more people than we have in the county. The problem I have is, when you set a goal, it's never the cup's not ever half full, it should be full. When we walk the talk, we should do that. We should not overemphasize certain things that's not coming to pass. But this will be brought up in another part of the other part of the public meeting. I thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. Um, there's nothing online. So we'll move to action item 5.8. this particular project we um, had gone out to bid actually twice with no response from any bidders so as a result of that uh, legally we are allowed to pursue a purchase of our liking um, assuming we try to do our our best with getting the best price again so we did that we went out and got three quotes we solicited quotes from five different vendors and only one vendor returned a response and that was visual imaging and that cost came in at $20,055. So we're requesting approval of that purchase to move forward with that project on the ballistics materials and products for the Sheriff's Office. Who okay, taking a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. 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 Sheriff here. Would you like to make any comments, Sheriff? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Won't say aye? Aye. Aye, so period. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving to uh, bid openings. Controller Rogers. The first item is Lycoming County Landfill Combined Site Utilities Modifications. There were three bidders. The first is Lende Corporation, $1,118,275. RNL Development Company, $748,458. And Commonwealth Drilling Company, $969,064. The other item is the SCADA System Design and Build. There was only one bidder, Marts, Marts Technologies Incorporated, $787,148.25. Okay, moving on to reports. Uh, Kaylin, accounts uh, payable cash requirements. Good morning. Presented for your ratification, our invoices due through January 18th, 2023, that were paid on January 11th, 2023, in the amount of one million six hundred and three thousand three hundred and twenty dollars and four cents. The breakdown is as follows, with 58.14% being funded by the general fund at $932,169.35. 12.61% is being funded by grants and other sources 
at $202,144.13. 26.2% or 0.2%, I'm sorry, is being funded by RMS at $417,222.65. And 3.23% is being funded by escrow at $51,783.91. Motion. I'll move to second. 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 Personal actions, Jessica. Good morning. Good morning. I'm seeking your approval on the following personnel actions. Um, these are conditional offers of employment subject to the successful completion of background check and all other employment conditions. <clears throat> For the district attorney's office, Phoebe Yates, um, hired as a deputy assistant di uh, district attorney um, at 70,000 per year, and she's anticipated to start on January 23rd. For the prison, a CO relief full-time replacement at $20 an hour uh, full-time, and uh, he is scheduled to start on January 20, 23rd as well. For the prison, Shane Ridgeway, another CO relief, full-time replacement at $20 an hour, anticipated to start on January 23rd. Marsha Thomas, transferring from PRC to the prison. Um, from This is a permanent status change for her, not the temporary status anymore. Um, and this is anticipated to take place on January 22nd. Hannah Shaka. Uh, was hired in the pre-release center as a resident supervisor, uh, full-time replacement at 17.18 per hour, and she's anticipated to start on January 23rd. At RMS, Carol Ryan um, was hired as a custodian, uh, floating full-time custodian at RMS, part-time. Her position will not exceed 1,000 hours annually. The pay rate is 14.50 an hour, and she's anticipated to start on January 23rd. And then lastly for the prison, Daniel, Daniel Bryan, Bryan uh, seal relief position, $20 an hour, and he is anticipated to start on January 29th. Okay, got a motion. I'll move to the I'll second. I, I do have a comment. Yes. That uh, it's pretty important that uh, when we say not to exceed 1,000 hours, that we do not. Mm -hmm. And and are the safeguards have that been communicated as to you know the, to the department? How are we safeguarding that they they do not go over that thousand hours? From my understanding, there's a report that sits on the intranet and um, page yeah. that managers are able um, to monitor the amount of hours that their employees have um, to ensure that they're not getting close to that thousand hours. I don't know if there's any other monitoring in place that maybe the controller's office does or... It would just be a departmental... Department review. head. Yeah. Yeah, that's my understanding. Because I do both. I mean, I look at that and then I look for discrepancies. So that can sometimes happen too. So you just have to monitor and be able to put on the employee and make sure they don't see those hours. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? On the side? Aye. 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 So carried. This time we'll recess the Commissioner's public meeting for the salary board. We'll continue the salary board this time. Yes. All right. Um, so for the district attorney's office, we are requesting, uh, or he is requesting to add a non-union deputy assistant district attorney position pay grade 12. Also for the district attorney's office, um, request to add a part-time clerk three pay grade four. And then there's a list of positions that are being reclassified from 75 hours per pay period to 80 hours per pay period due to them uh, supporting a 24-7 operations. Um, and this will be effective for the positions listed below on January 22nd. In the Adult Probation Office, John Stahl, Deputy Chief um, for Adult Probation, Eric Fortin, 
uh, adult probation supervisor, Dave Goodwin, chief for adult probation. In the coroner's office, uh, Gerald Ross, chief deputy coroner, Alexis Martin, deputy coroner, Mary Louise Pocky, deputy coroner, and Kate Nichols, deputy coroner slash administrative assistant. For the prison, Chris Ebner, deputy warden, uh, for the pre-release center, Carrie Snook, correctional officer. Also, Joel, Joel Worthington, uh, correctional officer for the pre-release center. Um, Bradley Basor, correctional counselor. Brian Barnes, deputy warden at the prison. Josh Lichter, maintenance three at the prison. Trenton Keasley, maintenance three. Zachariah Zalewicz, uh, maintenance manager. Kim Corman, our supervisor, Brad Shoemaker, the warden, Dustin Prelish, intake officer, um, Eric Spiegel, chief deputy sheriff, uh, also for the prison, clerk four, which is vacant. Um, there are um, some additional vacancies um, of these positions uh, on our TDA, so this would apply to all of those positions that are currently vacant as well. Okay. So this is something that's probably been long overdue where employees of the county have um, made themselves available and been required to be available uh, on a oftentimes after hour basis sometimes their choice sometimes they're not their choice but um, we're being only being paid at uh, for 75 hours mm -hmm. and uh, it just seems as though it's the right thing to do to make sure that when we expect people to cover uh, 24 7 for most of these are in public safety mm -hmm. actually they all are in public safety mm -hmm. that we uh, recognize what they're doing and that we not um, continue to have a system that doesn't do it it's going to cost some money for the taxpayers but I think the taxpayers have to recognize that you can't expect to pick up the phone at 2 in the morning at 911 and have someone there who's uh, you know not being <laughs> Mm. fairly compensated or expect that the prison or the sheriff's department or all of these places will run uh, without it so uh, I hope that that the folks the employees in the county will recognize uh, what is being done here and that the taxpayers will also recognize it yeah, these individuals are working a lot of times nights all times of nights you know two three o'clock in the morning they work on weekends so working holidays um, so, uh, specifically, the, uh, the sheriff's office, the, the coroner's office, the prison. I, I've seen it for 30 years. I work next door, and uh, this is long overdue. Yeah. The dispatcher's office is also under me and from 9 -11, your 9 11 center, basically. Yeah, yeah the, and the coroner's office is they're going out. Uh, honestly, I don't I quite understand how they have a life at all. And I don't mean that disparagingly, I mean that they're constantly beeped or called at, at all hours, so. And they're not only our upstairs lifestyle, they're the entire family. Right. You know, you get up in the middle of the night, you wake up your family, and, and it affects everybody in the household. So. I also want to mention that the schedules for these individuals will be changing, so they'll be um, adding a, a five additional hours that they'll be working per pay period, so um, this also should support some of the staffing issues that we're having in some of these areas as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. We're going to be putting more, putting the same people on for more hours, so mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's a good point. Okay, a motion? There's a... I'm sorry, go ahead. One question about yes. <coughs> what you're saying is interesting. Been there, been a safety director for years. I will tell you that every hour you work past what you're supposed to work, Things don't happen right. Your mind gets to boggle. You can't concentrate on anything. And especially, no matter how you look at this, it could be a firefighter, it could be a policeman, coroner, it could break down to the hospitals, no matter how you cut this. Basically, the staffing all over this world, in the United States, will say, right now we have 10 jobs for every one person. And we continue to build stuff, and we can't staff what we have. A sad situation. It's a true statement. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you so much, and thank you for understanding. This is a good point. That's a good point. Somewhere down the line, we're going to have to take a long, hard look at this and make sure these people are taken care of properly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll move to approve. I'll second. 
All in favor, sign. Aye. Aye. So carried. No. Thank you. I'm sorry. Sorry, Krista. Yep. Okay, three to one vote. Krista, would you like to make any comments? Again, we're making decisions that there are other people within the county that are affected and that are not being considered. And I don't appreciate not knowing about things or being part of the discussion, including when things are removed or added to the agenda. Thank you. Our doors open. You know when we have our HR directors meetings. I am not part of your HR director. If, if you, uh, we if have you had this discussion. I am salary issue. board. I asked if these were going to be on that's the agenda. When we, that's when we when take, the meeting take care was of that. Canceled. That's when we take care the of that. The meeting business. was canceled done to discuss this. I have offered multiple times to be available for a salary board discussion, I've, I've sent you not an emails. HR discussion. The only thing I want to say is that there are employees who feel that they were not included here. There's a reason that we can't move the entire county to 80 hours, and that is because it's going to cost about five million dollars. Five million dollars. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the situations that are most egregious and correct them. And as we go forward, if we find other situations that are egregious, we'll also try to look at correcting them. But to just have a blanket across the board movement from 75 to 80 would increase our payroll such in such an, I mean, literally it would require the raising of taxes by one mil because we raise, with one mil we raise about how much? We raise, Tony, what do we raise, Commissioner? One mil, we raise uh, 5.6. 5.6 million. 5 million when we raise it a mil. So, we're trying to take steps to alleviate problems that we consider to be very egregious to the, and that's to the public just and to the controller so you understand that. And I'm not suggesting that we change it across the board, but there are other departments. You're qualifying that these are 24-7 operations. Mm -hmm. There are other departments that are fit within that category. So I am not in any way suggesting you move all employees. I am suggesting that all employees that fit into the qualification you're listing be considered. Okay, we can certainly look at that. If you forward a list to the Director of Human Resources, we can certainly look at it and try to sort it out. And I have stated that as we look at something that has not been addressed in 34 years, that this Board of Commissioners is addressing, we are working together as a team at the recommendation of what's brought to us from HR and department heads mm -hmm. at budget time and seriously addressing this problem and anyone that lives within a budget we can only do so much so we can't address everybody at the same time it's impossible without raising taxes and I will not raise taxes I've said it before I'll say it again so we'll live within our means and we'll do what we can do to compensate people properly and that's what we're doing All in favor, say aye. Oh, I'm sorry, we already took the vote. It's three to one. Okay. We'll recess the um, sorry board this time and we reconvene the commissioner's public meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, making the same adjustments to the TDA that were listed under sal uh, the salary board. I won't list all of the names under the third bullet, um, but for the district attorney's office, request to add a non-union um, deputy assistant district attorney, pay grade 12. Also for the DA's office, request to add a part-time clerk, pay grade, uh, clerk three, excuse me, pay grade four. And then the reclassification of the positions listed um, from 75 hours to 80 hours, effective uh, January 22nd, 2023. The, the, and I, I, should, I should say the positions listed, excluding the ones that the director mentioned at the beginning of the conversation, the beginning of the meeting. Okay, can I have a motion? I move to approve. I'll second. Home versus aye. 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 So carried. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Just 
Um, all right, so um, vote to approve. Do I need uh, vote to approve the amendment to agreement with Trustmark Health Benefits. It's a 2023 budgeted item. Okay. Yeah, motion. I move to approve. Second. Okay, so I, uh, I'm just so the public understands, Trustmark is the third party administrator who administers our health plan, which is self funded. So that's who that is. Point two, Jerry. Uh, corporate email security and filtering. Good morning, Mr. Jerry Kennedy, CIO. Uh, before you is a request to purchase uh, email security services through CDWG. This is a 2023 budgeted item uh, at $15,225. It is a co stars purchase as well. Motion. I'll move Second. Do you want to highlight just the cost of the program and then how many emails our organization receives? Um, overall, uh, we receive about 125, 130,000 emails a month. Uh, out of those uh, emails, about 50% of them are filtered out um, with known bad content and known content that we actually uh, choose to filter out. Um, above and beyond the normal security filters. Um, it's just something that we need to do in this day and age. Yeah. And recently met with uh, you and some cybersecurity experts and mandates will be coming down to this year that we'll yeah. have to address. Yeah. Okay. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Security. <coughs> Thank you, Jerry. Uh, commissioner seeking your appro approval um, to appoint Brett Bose to the Lake County Planning Commission Board. Okay, this was something that was tabled two weeks ago. Correct. And we put it back on the agenda to vote on today. So I have a motion. I'll move to second. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. And um, there are two other vacancies within uh, the planning and we had a couple more applicants yeah, two more applicants. Uh, so uh, it is a very important position and one that if you do make a commitment to be on you know it is a commitment you know you're you're uh, part of a, an elite group that that can make changes within the county so um, uh, we would like to see more applicants although the ones that we've received are Pretty good. So. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 We want to thank Mr. Bose for, uh, for that application and, and uh, willing to be part, a participant and uh, joining the <coughs> County uh, Planning Commission. And the next record. Yep. Uh, 8.4 through 8.9 except for the 8.5 we already did. Mark. All right, good morning again. Um, 8.4, it's a vote to approve and award the bid for food products. Um, it's going to only be to Feasers and Cisco this time. It's for the four first quarter for um, prison and pre-release. Any motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, 8.6, this is for bread products um, for the first quarter for prison and pre-release, and that's going to be awarded to um, Bimbo Bakeries. They were the only bidder. I'll move to approve. I'll second. I'll move to approve. Aye. 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 So carry. 8.7, it's vote to approve the um, Save and Maintenance and Service Agreement. This is our annual renewal. As you know, this PA saving system is a um, victim notification system, um, and there's no cost for us to participate. This is so important. Yes. It notifies the victims. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to bring the district attorney's uh, credit to bring it to us to make sure that. Uh, yeah, I think I think this might be eighth or ninth year now, maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. All in favor, sign. Aye. They need a motion. I'm oh, sorry, motion. Yeah, I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor, sign. Aye. 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 Aye
The next item, 8.8, so vote to approve the inmate housing agreement. This one's with Columbia County. As you know, there we have several with the prison. It's on an as-needed basis. This one's $75 an hour per inmate. Okay. I have a motion. A, motion. a, day. a day, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, a day. Yeah, <laughs> that could get a little expensive if it's hourly <laughs> per day. Either way, it's expensive. Mr. Mayor, we have a motion? Second. I'll second. On your side? Aye. 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 So here we go. And the last item I have for you is on um, vote to approve the 2023 retail advertising agreement with Sun Gazette. This is how we do our, all our um, bulk advertising. This year we're keeping at 2,000 inches, which is consistent with what we've done in the prior years. And the daily rate to do such is um, $12.90. And then our Sunday rate is $15.15. .15. Sunday rate? Yes, there's sometimes that, you know, we do have to put things in that fall on a Sunday. That is very far and few in between though. Okay. It's a special rate that's outside of the normal $12 rate that we have. Okay, the reason why is there's no Sunday edition. Well, it's Saturday. It's a Saturday, Saturday edition. Saturday. Yes. Okay, it so like that's the thing. It says the Saturday sun. slash Sunday on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> All right. yeah that's okay. just what's the <coughs> agreement. Weekend edition. Okay. So. Pat, is that accurate? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second. Oh, yes. One question on this. Can you explain 8.5, exactly what it costs for this? Yeah. And the reason why we have to have this done? Well, let's, you would add this 8.5. We're on 8.9 right now. So they missed 8.5. We, we, we did that, that earlier beginning. on. Wait, if you want to ask a question when we finish. We have oh, a oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So motion and second on 8.9. On their side? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mind, you want to stick around? Stay here? Yep, thank okay. you, so you can answer his question. Sure. Okay. So um, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, so we're doing a redesign of the sheriff's office. We went out to bid twice for this particular um, product and materials that he needed um, for safety concerns, obviously, for his office. And um, the first time we went out to bid, we did not receive any bids. The second time, we did also did not receive any bids. So at that point in time, legally, we are allowed to seek bids as we want or pricing. Um, we still did our due diligence and solicited some vendors we thought that may have showed interest but maybe didn't want to comp um, compete in the, the bid process. Um, in doing such, we reached out to five. Only one came back, which was that visual. Uh, and they came in at a rate of $20,000, I think. And yeah, $20,000.55. $55, sorry, excuse me. Now, the reason I asked that question was, why are we waiting so long to do this? Why wasn't it done before? Well, with all the crime that's going on, no matter where we are. It comes this, down. This is part of the yeah. new remodel. For the I understand. I fully understand. Unfortunately, we always raise the red flag up after the fact. We should have looked at some under, under public safety. At any at any given time. Done this, been there, and done all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I and it's un, it's it's incredible that we have to wait until after the fact. We should be prepared before the fact. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously we have other projects that take took priority as well or just as equal as important. I mean, I'd let the commissioner speak on that. Of sure. Course. When we did rebuilds throughout the county, the sheriff is willing to go last, yes. which mm -hmm. he has been very patient about it. Yes. And he's been dislocated and relocated in several different locations for the last two and a half years. As we complete his, his rebuild, right. this is something he identified that he would like to have in his office. So it was identified through the rebuild. And I can understand that, but under yes. the American Rescue Workers Fund, that could be part of that. They could have used that in order to do that. Public safety. Why was that not documented with that? But they could have done this, what, two years ago? Well, the office was is, is just in the process well, right no, now. Well, no, I understand. What I'm saying okay. to you is, see what I'm saying right. to you, that money's put on a subsidy in order to make public safety. That's public safety. Mm -hmm. It's not building, buying a piece of ground. Right. It's not doing this. Not doing. This. It's public safety, right. and that's. And, and I understand where you're saying you're reorganizing. And that's good. I'm glad to hear that. The problem I have with it is, you've got to stop waiting until something happens and raise the red flag. We have to be prepared for the future. Well, on the positive side, nothing's happened yet, and we are, in a sense, being proactive. Well, to you, your point, that's correct. Right. So we're trying to. It's hard, and I understand it's yeah. really, really, really hard to do this. 
we've gone through a, a recount of an election, which that will be documented soon here on something else. But unfortunately, you know, we're spending money on certain objects that the county does not have. Is that correct, Scott? We're using money on general funds to pay for stuff that's not even budgeted. Um, not yes. necessarily. Not necessarily, no. Well, okay. Yeah. In this particular Everything case, we budget is what we spend it on. I understand it, but the general funds are for a purpose, and sometimes it's not documented properly. Well, I can tell you with this particular um, project, um, it is being funded um, partially by non taxpayer um, funds. Mm -hmm. They're being um, it's allocated with the district attorney's office. He's willing to pitch in money, um, as well as some other um, specialized funds that the, the sheriff's office. So there are minimal costs associated with um, taxpayer dollars on this particular project. That I would Well, that's, that's a good point. I understand that, that there's other other stipulations that happened prior to this. And, but again, you're mm -hmm. taking a proactive stand on this. And I think the public should understand that when, we, when they talk about this, it should be documented in the minutes that this is what we're doing. And it's, it's important. I mean, I'm, I'm a little ahead of the time for most of these people, I guess, but I've been there and done all this. People are held accountable. And people who have recognition, who do a meeting, have an uh, agenda to put in place, and they always ask for input from different people, it always should be documented, which they do document now. But again, that's important. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, um, Commissioner Coffin. Um, this past Tuesday, we were uh, honored to uh, close. Senator Casey was in our office, and uh, he had arrived. He would he wanted to discuss how the county was spending the ARPA funds, and uh, we went into detail with the fact that that initially the, the uh, commissioner sat down and decided that these monies would be spent on projects that were generational. And uh, then we explained how we met with the city, we met with the mayor. We then had three nights of township and borough meetings here in this room. Had about 50% of the townships and boroughs attend to hear what their needs were, what their projects were. Uh, we explained to Senator Casey how um, we then met with the sewer and water authorities throughout the county and uh, then reached out to the developers and realtors in the county and learned that there was a housing crisis. The housing is, and realtors, uh, the developers, wanted to meet with the water and sewer people. So we had further meetings. And because Lycoming County is such a large agricultural region, we reached out to the conservation district and the farmers. And lastly, we reached out to the early childhood people because of the workforce development issues that go on and the fact that uh, a lot of people are staying home because they can't afford daycare. And daycare isn't available because the slots are few, because daycare workers are paid at minimal. Uh, we, we talked about that problem. Um, we then showed him uh, our whiteboard behind us of uh, all our, our hard work on this project and how it was broken down into categories. And he was very impressed by this. He said, most counties haven't done this. He said, this is a blueprint for other counties that we should be bragging about it. Um, I'm not one to brag, I'm just one to work with my colleagues to get things done. So I, I expressed him a thank you, and that we would continue to, to work on our mission to allocate these monies. I want to thank the planning department, they were there. Uh, CDCOG is, is uh, assisting us on this, they were there. And it was a great meeting overall. And um, we want to thank the senator for being here. He also, um, we talked about broadband and the need for that in the state and this county. And uh, he expressed that um, there's monies that are going to be available for that. And it was important to get with the state authority uh, and have meetings with them to uh, obtain some of those monies that, that are being spent throughout the state. So that was our meeting on Tuesday. Anything you want to add on that, either Commissioner? Scott, may I ask a question? Yes. You said 50% of the municipalities attended your meetings. Yes. Was Jersey Shore present? Yes, they were. Okay, thank you. There were a couple, I think. Yeah. 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 Why you know, were we too? 
It was interesting about the meeting is, as commissioners, we go out and we meet with constituents and we hear what they're saying and we try to take what they're saying and incorporate it into what we do, right? I mean, that's what you do as an elected official. So I thought it was really interesting for a U.S. Senator to be here meeting with people who, and I'm sure he would love to meet with as many people as he can, but meeting with people who are trying to solve some of the problems that the money is being appropriated by the federal government. So the federal government, he votes to approve that money, and now what he's doing, he's basically coming and saying, okay, commissioners, how did it go with that money? And we told him some things that we thought should be done a little differently next time, some things that went well, some things that um, we could, could improve. I mean, <clears throat> overall, I think all three of us were happy to have $22 million because as we've noted with the, um, with the water and sewer, if we didn't get that money from the federal government, it would have ultimately been the ratepayers, which are all of our families in Lincoln County. May, may I interrupt you for one yeah. second? We added to the senator, there was $78 million with the request. Right. For the $22 million. Right. And so, you know, one of the discussions we had with him is, you know, is this something that should be done on a you know, another time. And I mean, I know that there are people who feel, and it's, I've had this discussion with you, Commissioner, about the concern about the deficit and so forth. I think it's important for us in rural communities to understand that when money comes in from the outside, it helps stabilize our, and provide resources for rebuilding our infrastructure, like the water and sewer lines that are needed for a business to come in. There's, uh, Commissioner Metzger can talk about in Jersey Shore, the, the, the situation with the water and sewer, right? The it's, a, it's 108 years old that is using wood filters. And when they have a house fire in Jersey Shore, the water pressure at the hospital goes, is lowered. So when you have businesses up there, uh, they, need, they need help. Along, along basically throughout the county, we have our water systems and sewer systems throughout the county are, are basically, a lot of them are over 100 years old. And when you're trying to push water uphill, yeah. like where I live at, yeah. there's 16 inch mains run up through there, with the, the, and you're taking that uptown to fight fires, the water pressure's bound to drop no matter what. Yeah, exactly. And so, so sometimes I think that if we can get past looking at each other as the political affiliation we are and understand that by living in a rural community, we are at a disadvantage for capital investment because of all sorts of reasons. We have a lower uh, median income, 15% lower in our community than statewide. We have less capital investment. It's, it's not like, remember when Amazon was gonna build that headquarters? Mm -hmm. They were gonna put 25, they did, they put $25 billion into a community where they built it. And we do what we can to try to attract organizations to come here, but we can only attract them if we have water so it isn't a choice between fighting a fire and providing water to a local manufacturer, right? So that they're not having to, we don't have to say to them, oh, you can't please shut down your water because we've got to fight fire. So I think it was a good conversation with the senator and uh, I, I just thought it was great for, for us to, to think about that, that um, as much as we may be concerned, we're always concerned about spending, right? I mean, it's, it's, I call it the post-depression raising, right? I was raised by parents who lived during the depression and that's a sort of a depression mentality. You, you don't waste things, right? You don't waste water, you don't waste. It's not a bad way to live either, right? But, <laughs> so anyway, it was a good meeting. Yeah, and I, we shared with them that uh, the director and I were at a CCAP meeting. We shared this with the County Commissioners Association and, uh, and they were very impressed with what our county was developing. That a lot of the counties at that time and even started to address how they were going to spend their ARPA monies. So. Yeah. Well, he talked, he, yeah. yeah. We, one of the things that we need to, and the staff is going to pursue, uh, is the broadband authority that has been created in the state that's channeling the federal money to the state. Uh, and we, we, that was, that's another infrastructure item that we really need to develop, is the broadband. So, so the only other, I have an interest, I, I've been thinking a little bit about Martin Luther King's uh, birthday coming up, and it, what's interesting to me is how 50 years after his death, um, 
the message that we hear about him has sort of been has sort of been evolved, right? And there's no question he was about public service, and there'll be a lot of events about public service. He was also about challenging the status quo in a peaceful way, right? He was about challenging, and, and at the time that he died, and this has sort of made me think about this when last week we had Mr. Seaver here, we have another Vietnam War vet here. There were two things going on with Martin Luther King that a lot of times we don't talk about when we think about his birthday and so forth and his death. He was in Memphis, Tennessee supporting a strike by 1,300 black sanitation workers. Two sanitation workers had been crushed to death February of 1968 by malfunctioning equipment. And two years before that, the workers had gone out on strike and it was, they were municipal workers. They worked for the city of Memphis. The strike hadn't been successful and there really was no change in the conditions that led to the dangers for them. So one thing he was doing, and it was supported by a white national union, which was AFSCME, the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees, is a union that represents our prison guards. So one thing he was doing is he was, he was engaged in something that really challenged the power structure because black and white workers were now coming together to say we need to change conditions. The other thing that he did is he opposed the Vietnam War. He had come out publicly at a time in 1968 when opposing the Vietnam War was something that was very, very uh, unusual. Right? I mean, all uh, elected people. It's interesting because Al Seaver, who's in the audience here, had mentioned to me about uh, some incidents he had when he was in Vietnam. So anyway, I think when we think about him, and we think about, because I think a lot about what's happening in our own communities with people being concerned about elections and so forth, how do we try to understand that there's a feeling by people that they're not being heard and find a way to fix that or help them get to a place where they feel like they're participating in their democracy. Because there's no question, I am a firm believer in challenging the status quo because I think that that's the only way change will be made. I've come over the years to recognize that if we don't do it in a peaceful manner, we end up simply becoming what we are trying to change, whether it's, whether it's not listening to people or whether it's not uh, paying attention. And, uh, and that, you know, I, I, and I mean this sincerely, it goes from everything we do, our, ish, our, cons our disagreements we've had with our controller to things like recounting elections. So we're, none of us are angels, but maybe, and none of us, we're all flawed, but maybe there's a way we can find in Martin Luther King's living what we can sort of emulate if we think about some of the things he stood for. So that, that's where, where I'm at today. Okay, so March starts. Can I give and you March. a comment on Martin Luther King Day? I called Rick last week. Could you wait till public, okay. public comment? Do you have any more yeah. comments? Do you? Yeah, the, the, the march starts what? At noon, Market Square. It goes around a couple blocks. So it may stop three times. So okay. we ask people to attend. It's being organized by step, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last thing, um, do you have anything else? The last thing I'll just briefly uh, touch on is the recount. Um, the recount was scheduled from January 9th through January 31st. Uh, we had uh, 26 workers, 13 teams of two, that completed the recount in two and a half days. Uh, Forrest, I believe, is in the audience. He is going to be issued a press release. Today or tomorrow? Pending your office's approval. Okay. And then we have a um, Board of Elections meeting scheduled on the overall um, findings, which is, I think, January 24th. 24th. And at that time, uh, we'll be open to the public for the Board of Elections to discuss the findings. Um, so it went very smoothly and much quick, more quickly than anticipated. Um, the 26 workers were county workers that were reassigned to do those duties during those two and a half days. 
which is no different than if we would have a catastrophic event in the county, such as a flood or um, an exercise that the department may be doing, or Little League International who request times county workers to have county workers reassigned to do different duties. There was no overtime paid, and they were paid at their hourly rate for those two and a half days. They just basically did something different than what their normal duties were for that day. I had the approval of their department head. And I want to thank those workers immensely. I think all three of us do for taking their time during those those hours and uh, completing this this recount. Um, and uh, the Department of uh, Voter Services also for their service for their services through this time. Okay, public comment. Al, you, you were first because you asked to. You just take your name. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Al Saber, uh, Well Saw Township. I just want to make a comment on uh, you mentioned Martin Luther King Day. I told you last week. People don't I'm old. People don't remember how things were. They were much worse than today. When Martin Luther King got killed, I was at Fort Hood, Texas. We were going to Vietnam because the Tet Offensive just occurred. When our company got on buses to go to Vietnam, we had soldiers begging our first sergeant to go to Vietnam because they did not want to go to Detroit and fight Americans. They were draftees. Our helicopters went to Vietnam with rocket pods and miniguns. The ones going to Detroit took the rocket pods off. They had machine guns on them. They went to fight Americans. And they told us when we were going to Vietnam, we said, you know, there's more bullets over Watts Detroit and D.C. than there are over the city of Saigon. Anyway, uh, it was bad back then. <laughs> anyway, general comment, I hear rumors going around on stream clearing and whatever, and I don't know if the commissioners are aware. Uh, I used to be in charge of all the streams for 14 counties. Senator Madigan had us do a two-year study on the streams in the northern tier up here. And DEP has it, the county has it. Like, Homing County is very active, and, and a lot of good things came out of it. And it all came down to money. Where's the money going to come? After the 96 flood, my people issued over 3,000 permits for stream cleaning. We went back later to see how many were actually done. About 200. No money. Everybody wants the government to throw money at it. And all you hear was, after the 72 flood, they came in and threw money at us. It's not 72. There's not that money, but... Like I said, I just want you aware there is studies, and there are great studies. A lot of people participated. I think every township in like, on like Homey Creek, we're in on all the meetings. But uh, it's it's been well studied. The copies are there, and if you ever need me to pick my brain on it, uh, we did a lot of stuff that doesn't work. <laughs> a lot of money and stuff that didn't work. You know, Al, the. Um there is money that's coming down, almost a million dollars, to the conservation district. Oh, yeah. And so they are being used for projects. Now, how much they can use for clean screen, uh, stream cleaning is, is not clear. But it, it would be worth it, I think, for you, especially if you have any, any um, do you have any material from the study? Or? No, they all have it in the files. They have it in the files, yeah. We have okay. stuff. Bradford County did so much work. The Senator Madigan was from there, so a lot of money went to Bradford County. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the things just didn't work. There were projects that were two, three million dollars. And a couple months later, high water took it all out again. In fact, what I used to show people is the project Herman Lowe did down here on the Loyal Sock with no permits or nothing. It's still there. It works right about the swimming pool. Yeah. You go down, that thing works. And a lot of expensive projects didn't. <laughs> So, I just want to make the word of study. Saber, I would like to say welcome home. Yeah. Thank you, brother. You too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your service. Yes. Bill Fenderson from the Woodward Township up here again. I don't want to take a lot of your time, but there's a lot of things that should be discussed about this recount. I would like to make known that uh, four sits back in the back of the room. I want to make some verification about a few things. The first verification is there's 81 precincts. 
remember, 81 precincts. Each 81 precincts has three elected officers by the people, by the people, okay? So that being said, at the end of the night, I should say, at the beginning of the day, we take an oath to office, okay? Same as you do when you elected officers, right? Okay, we take an oath to office. It's documented on paper. Understand this. It's documented on paper. The problem with this is, every time we think about this, there's two things. Every night when we shut down, we have to count for every ballot. <coughs> we have to make sure our numbers are the same numbers that's on the machine. And we have to sign them papers. We have to sign them papers. And the habeas recount done is a horse and pony show. It ain't gonna prove nothing. I've been doing elections for 12 years. 12 years, going on 13. We had a PowerPoint play up here showing the old equipment which I used and I cursed that machinery. Sir, sir could you speak in the oh, mic sorry, I'm sorry. live stream? Uh, I, I, I apologize. Could you, could you I address apologize. us and not the audience? I, I apologize. Thank you. And, and the problem with this is, the first thing is, no one understands how elections are done. I don't think anyone in here has any idea how much time and effort goes into elections. I do. John does. He, he's an elected officer. May I interject something? There are three positions that are counted. Excuse me. He's speaking. Yep. If you want to speak, you can come and, up afterwards. And, a, and, after the, and after this is done, I apologize for walking. I apologize. That's okay. But after this is done, we have to sign. It's like buying a house. It's like buying a house. You're putting your name on a piece of paper, which is in a federal, it's a federal election, not just a state election. We're documenting that stuff. It's our position to make sure we're correct. And you have no idea what it takes to do this. And someone says 13 hours. I will tell you this, any given precinct, depending upon the size, the number of people in the precincts, some precincts it might take an hour to set up, an hour to tear down. We have one of the largest precincts around in Woodward Township. It takes us over 40 hours sometimes, maybe, maybe 60 hours to prepare for all this. We have to make sure we have people in place to do these elections. And people say, well, I guess what? These are volunteers. Well, yes, there is volunteers. But there's 81 precincts that have three elected officers and probably four when you count the, you have your constables there. But the habeas recount was a waste of time and it's gonna come out the same way it was. And the problem with this is, now we have a backup with paper, which we never had before. We never had that before. We never had a backup with paper going through a machine. Never. Never. Does anyone understand that? So with what happens in this, this election recount, we didn't prove anything, but the fact was, we just wanted to prove a point. And the problem with proving a point is, the time was spent with these people, that's nice. They had to do other jobs too, but thank God they did it, and they did it in record time. 59,000 votes. Now remember this count, this number. 59,000 votes. How many votes would there be if everyone would have voted as per se people would say? We didn't vote. Why didn't we vote? We were at the election hall, but we didn't like who, didn't, who, didn't want, who was on running on the ticket. So we didn't vote for them. At the end of the night, we know how many people voted through that machine. And all they have to do is look at the tabulation sheets. This is not rocket science. We're going into another election, come May, and I will tell you, it's the same story, it's not gonna go away because people don't wanna take credit for anything. All they wanna do is badmouth everything. It's not a political agenda. Again, it's not a political agenda. It's the, for the commonwealth of all the people, period. We're looking at our forefront of our children coming in, take over our jobs, and everyone retires. And I will tell you, I would like to have a head count of the people who in the hall are working today, and you'll see that most of them are either working for the county or everyone else is retired. Thank you. Thank you so much.
John Sherman, John Sherman, Sure. Uh, change the subject of a matter here. Uh, to delineate on further on what Bill says, there are four positions, th three that are elected: judge of elections, minority inspector of elections, and majority inspector of elections. Which I'm elected in minority inspection of elections, inspector of elections. And me, like eighty other these inspector of elections goes, are are not going to put their signature on on records that they think are false. And for anything to happen, it's going to take better than six people to try cheating in any one spot. With some and the the people that are quote volunteers, they also get paid. But believe me. That's an exhausting day. That's 16, that was 16 hours for me, better than what it is for Bill. Uh, I kind of got admonished by you two weeks ago for figures I presented about what the possible cost of the, this recount would be. Thank God I'm wrong. But I had six years to, on a school board helping me determine budgets of, 200, of totally $240 million, better than $40 million a year. Uh, I was always taught that when you undertake something that you get an estimate of what it's going to cost first with it. With it. So you at least know how much money you're going to spend. What you don't say to the public, which you did, Scott, was it was going to be minimal. I pushed you twice on it and you didn't answer me. You couldn't give me an answer. So uh, I'll leave it at that. I backed my stuff with the figures that I had. And I do not consider it irresponsible for what I did or what Rick Marabito did. It's your opinion. Thank you. With it. Now, I for everybody getting raises with things, when, when I look at things a little bit differently. You're going to, all this pay increase to 2027. You're definitely running for the last three years uh, deficit budgets. You've been taken out of out of general funds to meet the expenses. So which means in three years there has not been a balanced budget presented to the community. Where is the money going to come from and how much is this total pack this total pack financial package going to be to the taxpayers? We've introduced what our financial package so far has been. We we, we relayed to the public that the last going into twenty twenty three that the three point five increase was seven hundred eleven thousand dollars. Okay. We talked about the people that were uh, being assessed at the time going into 2023. I believe was around 395,000. It was about 1.1 million dollars. 1.1 million for roughly, roughly going into for the that. 2023 budget. Yeah, which, but, which uh, the budget. Excuse me. Let me finish. The budget covered. We approved that. The monies are available to pay that. We have uh, have had approximately 30 to 50 positions open for the last three, approximately two and a half, three years. So the monies we have saved from that over the course of time has, has uh, increased our, our um, um, uh, fund balance. So there's monies available there. Everything we look at, we look to see whether we can do it within the budget without an increase. Everything we do, and I'm telling you right now, John, I don't spend money unless it has to be spent. I'm one of the most conservative people you'll ever meet. I didn't ask that, Scott. So, yes, you did. did. No, Scott, I asked how much it might be going to, the whole okay. total package was going to be. And, and we've released that, okay? Okay, fine. Now, the, the, the adjustments that we've done, done today, we have the figures. Jessica's still here. Okay, she, she left. We have those figures for the 80 hours. They're upstairs. It, it was roughly 78,000 minus three, so I don't know. Yes. So, but, Basically, yeah, those three ba basically, basically, what, like I said, what if maybe I'm missing something? What is the total package going to cost the taxpayers for through 2027? With the total combined raises for over the years. We don't know that because we haven't addressed everything yet. Okay, John, I can say this from from what we've tried to reorganize uh, the positions that were changed that we believe just in this 2022 and 23. Will be somewhere around one point four. And I want to thank Mr. Merritt Beato for recognizing what Mr. Siever did. Um, I don't think it was right for somebody to sit up here and not 
not thank Mr. Seaver for his service, which happened last week. It does to me, sir. Good morning, Commissioners. Jeff Stroman, Woodward Township. I didn't want to, <clears throat> regarding the recount, I didn't want to let another minute pass without acknowledging the uh, staff of the county that did the recount for a job well done. Uh, they truly made us a shining community on the hill, and um, we really, uh, hats off. Thank you. They did a great job. And thank you. And I'll reiterate my words that I shared with Mr. Boji yesterday when he called me. The reason why I voted for a recount was to show that the tabulators matched the ballots and to restore voter confidence in this county. We had a lot of people, and it was growing daily, that thought that something was amiss. And it was affecting people's attitude whether they wanted to go vote in the future. This recount will show that we do it right in Lycoming County. And then we can put this to bed once and for all. So the only, the only thing, I've read some of the press and I keep reading the commissioners voted to recount. And it was actually three to two. I, two, 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 two to, to one. Three, one. Two to one, two to right. One. We have five we'll commissioners now. Two more people. <laughs> right. No, it was, two, it was a two to one vote. And I only mention that because I actually, I saw on MSNBC, someone showed it to me. I don't typically Is watch it. Two? And they said the county commissioners, and I saw in our own local paper, the county commissioners, it was a 2-1 vote. I, I didn't vote to do it because I didn't think that it made sense to count the ballots in one county when it's not going to change an election. And when we have the Department of Justice, we've spent, our director of elections has spent an enormous amount of time, you've been to the meetings, some of you have been to the meetings, having to make PowerPoints having to teach people, having to do a lot of things. And I had hoped we could get to a point with the public where they could feel comfortable about the machines through discussion and so forth. And I didn't know that we had to actually go through an exercise of recounting them, uh, which is why I voted against it. But this, so. this was a great uh, exercise when it comes right down to it, okay? We proved our point or that the system works one. We also understand that, you know, some of the voters need to be educated on how to vote. I mean, holy smokes, to to not just fill in the circle or, you know, the no votes or the duplicate votes. And, uh, there, were, uh, there were a number of them. And in a local race, one vote could matter, you know. Uh, and, and we've seen that. So uh, I hope we look at it as a, as a positive, I, I do. Uh, I also think it's a, a great example of citizens will be heard. If you work hard enough, you do it the right way. You don't go burn down buildings. You don't go spit on people. You don't go fight, okay? You do what you need to do, and that's petition your elected officials who are accountable. We are the accountable ones. And we will make that decision. And if you don't like it, guess what? You get to vote us out or you keep, keep us in office. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. And so even, even a minority amount of people. Now, I would say that they would be able to get 10,000 signatures if the time was given to them or they had enough time. But when you're looking at that many people, even though it's a minority, they would listen to you. And I don't care what party. Tony, we may need add, to listen. May I add something to that? Yes, yes. There are problems that are habitual as far as people not filling out their ballots correctly. Why doesn't Forrest and that make a presentation, go around to the school boards and let them and, and, and make a presentation to the public and have it in maybe in school districts after that, fire halls and whatever. I don't know how many people are going to have come. But at least you get out and tell the people what it is instead of keeping the information right here. John, I think I think that's a great idea, mm -hmm. and I think it's one that Forrest spent a lot of time. I'm not criticizing Forrest. Yeah. No, I'm no. making a suggestion. At least because you're going to start having up in my district elections at the school, at the school, at the, 
this, at the district, our, our, our school district, and using our school facilities. With it. So now, be, between now and November, and, like, and even before the primary, to get out and go to the school boards, have to make a PowerPoint presentation, people there, and people attend, and maybe get it out in a, whole, in a fire hall or some situations like that, communities, going to the senior citizen centers, step centers, and all this. If there's problems, then that helps educate the people instead of just being right here with that PowerPoint presentation. Good, and what can be point. done about that? It's a good point, and I, I, and I think we can do that. Mm -hmm. or, or at least the elected. I, I mean, I would, I would go out and, and uh, advocate and, and put on some presentations myself. So, it's just a suggestion. But. So, Commissioner, I mean, you, you make a good point about people petitioning the government and then the government responding and so forth. So there are two things that come to my mind immediately, just not even thinking too hard about, since I've been Commissioner, two important issues that I think the board has never taken action on. One of them was during the beginning of the pandemic, we had a lot of citizens come and said, listen, will you help us get people out of nursing homes? In particular, there was a nursing home in Jersey Shore where people were dying at record numbers. And the board chose not to, they voted against, on my motion, they voted against uh, helping and fronting a modest amount of money, which by the way, in retrospect, we would have gotten back from uh, the federal government. Uh, and people died because the Board of Commissioners did not take action. Uh, that was this, 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 my second term. In my first term, there was a large outpouring of people who asked the Board of Commissioners to do a forensic audit of the hotel tax money, which is about $1.2 million a year. And that would have simply involved, here we recounted ballots, that would have involved sitting down and examining where the $1.2 million of the hotel tax was going. And citizens came, they presented petitions, they presented uh, examples of uh, all sorts of issues with the spending of it and again the board on my motion the board voted two to one not to do it now it has nothing to do with my motion but my point is that whenever citizens come and petition this board regardless of their political affiliation they should be listened to and it shouldn't only be listened to if the a uh, large number of people from one political party that happens to be the base of that party and obviously is very influential in voting in primaries, we shouldn't only listen when they come because then what we're not doing is we're not really being uh, truly open to listening to all our constituents. We're being responsive to constituents who, actually, who happen to have a lot of influence in a primary election, specifically the commissioner. Can I respond? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think it's a terrible example, and it's almost laughable that you would even mention that because there were children that were trying to pull their parents out of those homes, and they couldn't do it for a number of reasons. What makes you think that they could? That, I mean, that's. I mean, I. I would. I, if if I was a child and I had a parent in there, I would have gotten them out one way or the other. But there, there were consequences for that, that they wouldn't get back in, you know, that would they be, have better care there than versus at home. I mean, to say that we didn't support something like that is kind of like ludicrous. Well, it's not ludicrous, and unfortunately you may not understand it, but the, the agency that came to us, Center for Independent Living, is a state-sanctioned agency that has the authority from the state to remove people from homes and does it on a routine basis. I don't want to rehash the history, but it's important for people to understand this wasn't just a group of citizens who said, hey, we'd like to take some people out of a nursing home because people are dying in the pandemic. They had authority from the state. What they didn't have was the financial resources to do it. They do it on a daily basis. They do it on a daily basis. What they were trying to do was address the crisis of the pandemic where we knew people were dying in nursing homes. So maybe there was a misunderstanding, but there's no question they had the authority to do it given the resources. And by the way, they did do some, they just couldn't do the numbers that were needed to really prevent large numbers of deaths. Any other public comment? Yes, Mr. Stroman was next, and then... Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Stroman was next, and then Mr. Stell. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Stroman spoke. I, I apologize. Mr. Stell. 
Yes, I wanted to just kind of finish on uh, Martin Luther King Day coming up because uh, I think it would be helpful if everyone would go on YouTube, or not YouTube, but, but Google, and, and read that, what we call the I Have a Dream speech. Uh, that speech is, quite frankly, I think after the Gettysburg Address, the second most important speech. And, and to, I think a lot of the issues that we talk about, uh, Martin Luther King addressed in that talk. And the irony of the speech is the fact that it is it was done, if you remember, uh, at the Lincoln Memorial. Lincoln is behind him. He is, is speaking on the 100th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, but, well, actually, the, the, the uh, Gettysburg Address. And he specifically said the opening line of it was five score years ago, our great American in whom symbolic shadow we stand today, so he could have said 100 years ago. By saying five score, he is obviously alluding to four score and seven years ago, which alludes back to the Declaration of Independence in 1776. So in one sentence, the guy puts together all of American history and, and what we stand for. And the speech itself is just amazing. I've used it as an example for teaching public speaking because it's so well designed. He was on a roll. He was only supposed to speak somewhere between five and seven minutes because it was the end of the day. It was super hot. They just wanted him to get finished. But he had to crowd. They are just hanging on every word and he's wrapping it up. And Mahalia Jackson is behind him. And he's, and if, if, if you can get the, it's, it's, they, for a long time, wouldn't you, they kind of proprietized it so you couldn't really hear the real one. But if you listen to the actual speech, he's, he's wrapping it up. And you don't hear her say it, but she says, tell him about the dream, Martin, tell him about the dream. So suddenly, it kind of shifts gears, and he starts talking about a, kind of a thing that he had been using and that for several years now. And that was all impromptu. That whole I have a dream part was totally on the, on the fly, but it's the part that we all remember. But I wanna say, yes, and it's, it's priceless, but the beginning, the, 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 the body of the speech, I think teaches us tremendous about what we are as a people and what I would hope that Americans would go back to and realize that all the things that we're kind of struggling with now and, and all the, let's say we're not following rule of law, would have caused Martin Luther King to turn in his grave because that was what he was appealing to even in that speech. Our laws say this should not be. Let's be what we're supposed to be. That was his call. So I would hope that, that this would not just be another um, you know, holiday. And, and, and I want to, uh, truth be told, I was not happy that they made a Martin Luther King Day specifically because he's the only American that has a day. We got rid of Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday. We can bind them together to President's Day. So this is the only person in all of our holidays that we actually recognize a single person. But if we could use that to make it, to unify ourselves, then, then all the better. That was it. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Mr. Adams. Mr. Uh, I, liked your, I liked your uh, comments from Kate when you had to make me. Well, thanks. I sent in quite a few letters, but I, maybe I sent in too many at once, and then something I'm proud of. But uh, I have to work on that, because, um, anyway. Um, I'm going to start off with Psalm 19, 7 through 10. It's God's about law and order. And beginning that psalm starts with, he's a God of uh, creation. You know, the heavens, 
declare the, uh, the majesty of the Lord. And then, then through these psalms, he goes, the law of the Lord is perfect. The testimonies of the Lord are sure. The precepts of the Lord are right. The commandments of the Lord are pure. The fear of the Lord is clean. The judgments of the Lord are true. And then it gives, uh, you know, what what comes from that? You know, it gives man enlightenment. It gives man wisdom. It gives man uh, the understanding how to get along with each other. Because when you're holding to lo- rule of law, which comes from the law book of God, and that's what this country is founded on. That's what Martin Luther King was talking about. He was a reverend, remember? So he's used to speaking. And that's what he wants this country a, a, to be about: is the rule and law of God. And so when. Uh, it also, at the end of that psalm, it says um, they are more desirable than gold, sweeter than honey, and and the droppings of the honeycomb, um, and even more precious than than pure gold. Is that once once man realized the wisdom and how to live with each, with each other in the precepts and understandings of God, how He wants us to live according to His law book. Uh, then, then we don't have the problems that we have. We can stand up and become a strong country. Um, so Martin Luther King, he, the, one of the main things I remember out of his speech is uh, to judge man on his character, on the content of his character, not on the color of his skin. And that's what we see today, everything being turned around on its head because of, of the uh, turning our backs, pushing God out of the public square and saying we don't need that nonsense in our schools, we don't need it in our, in our public office, and that's an outright lie because you can't, you can't have freedom and liberty and justice without it because that's the only place we get it. Any other religion, any other form of worship doesn't come. It doesn't bring it. And you can look through your history, even a, a, a short look back at history will show you that, you know, in the, in the dark ages, the dark ages were there because the law of God, the rule of God, the word of God was, was kept under wraps. It wasn't brought to the light. And, um, I, and we can live, hopefully we live another day to, dis, live to disagree and, um, and have our battles with each other in a decent and fair way, the way God wants us to, to be. Because they're not always going to agree with, on everything. Even people that agree basically on things aren't always going to agree on things. But... We need to have come together as a society and not beat each other's throats, um, but beat each other's minds so we can work, you know, work things out. Thank you, Forrest, for your work. Um, We're respectful. And to the comments about uh, the voting and the the work that goes in, you're right. There's a lot of work that goes into that. And there's no one questioning the integrity of the people working at those polls and the people working doing the jobs, I've said this about every time I speak on this, no one's questioning the integrity of the people doing the job, the question is on the, on the machines. And it's the machines that haven't been trusted because they've been shown in other parts of the country that those tabulators can be can flip votes and have been proven to do that. Whether it's a machine in, in this county or not, that's, what, that's the reason that was looked at. That's why that was part of the interest. And that's the truth. No one's questioned integrity of any of the workers here. I was a poll watcher a couple times through the elections, and I mean, I see everything. Uh, it's like a community effort, and I love it. You know, that's how it should be. It shouldn't be come in, you're a robot, you can't say, you can't talk to people. Some people think that's how it should be. It shouldn't be. It should be a, a, a time where uh, people can recognize each other who's in their community. That's why I advocate for smaller voting wards, not bigger ones. So we, the people know who are, their neighbors are coming in to vote, and you don't have to question uh, so much of, uh, you know, who's coming in here, you know, and, and uh, to keep that integrity. And it, um, so I think that's about all my rant for today. Thank uh, you, Tom. Although I could probably go on and on. Thank Thanks. You. <laughs> Anyone else? Just one quick one. Very briefly, please. It'll be brief. For those who uh, keep an eye on your PPL bill, I will let you know that your bill for, the, for your bill coming due will be estimated. PPL software does not work. Been on the phone with representatives about this, and on the phone with PPL, they're going to estimate your bill. 
and they're going to use the numbers from last last year. So the following bill you get, the balance of your money, will be applied to your new bill. It's going to be a pretty stiff bill. So I, and I know no one publicizes this stuff. It's just the way it is. But I want to make someone, everyone aware of this. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Okay, online. There are. Yes. Okay. Um, from Christopher Cooper, do your open records, Job McDermott, and free Tony Cooper. From Carla Miller, very true. From Christopher Cooper, accountability. From Jeff Will Try, unconditional refusal to raise taxes doesn't sound like a well supported, sustainable, or thought out stance. Taxes should be looked at as a, a, way to, a way we give back to and support our society, right? Jeff will try. Multiple sectors of infrastructure, water, electricity, transportation, healthcare, ecology, uh, and internet to start are, are, are in sore need of being updated slash improved. Christopher Cooper, amen. Jeff will try. Spending money on infrastructure like that is akin to planting a tree for the benefit of our, of our descendants. That's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. We've completed our agenda, so the meeting will be adjourned. Our next meeting will be Thursday, January 19th, 2023, at 10 a.m. right here in this room. Thank you.